G'day guys, welcome back to Oceania. It's been a little while since I've said that because it has been a while since I've released an Oceania episode. I'll talk a little bit about that a little later on in this episode and talk about the future plans for some of the builds coming up in Oceania. But for now, we're going to dive into the build because it is going to be a pretty massive one. A few months ago, we built the International Airport of Dundee and I have left it in quite a state. It is an absolute mess down here. From up top, this looks pretty decent, it's alright, but when you get a little bit closer, you'll see that the people getting in and out of the airport have absolutely the worst time getting to and from Dundee. There's pretty much only one road access, the highway is disjointed and hard to reach, not to mention we have zero public transport options. However, we do have the potential to connect not only this metro, but a light rail network, we have some new buses to play with, and we have a couple of other options that I want to fly by you guys, no pun intended. This definitely won't be the final time we work on the airport. I want to come back here probably in the next episode and work on some of the ideas that I'm going to fly by you guys and get some ideas. So uh, do hit me up. To kick things off, I wanted to fix a problem that I was having with the planes taking off. As you can see, they were taking a pretty sharp left hand turn, which was just, I was not really that happy about that. And I just sort of figured that was just how the mechanics were going to just play out and I was just going to have to live with it, but I thought I'd just give something a little try. As you can see, the flight path is on the left hand side, so planes do have to take a left hand turn just to reach it. So why don't we just remove that flight path and drag it out directly in front of the runway. So that's exactly what I did. I just changed the direction and the path of that flight path and that made it so that planes didn't actually have to take that left hand turn and it was a little bit finicky at first, you know, you have to try and make sure that it is the closest flight path so that they're not just taking a different turn just to reach the closest one. And I wouldn't say that this is perfect, but it's definitely a lot better than it was before. And I think with a little bit of fine tuning, I can get the planes landing and taken off directly as they would in real life without taking any ridiculous turns. So before I provide any sort of real public transport, I figured some sort of taxi depot super close would at least provide some sort of taxi service. You know, anything to keep any of the tourists coming in and out of Dundee Airport. You gotta keep them happy, you know? You never know who's gonna walk out those doors. Ah, g'day, didn't see you there. My name's Drew, Drew Dollars. I'm a big important business guy on a business trip here in Dundee. Don't let the cash of the tire fool you. Taxi. Are you aware to you, big fella? Downtown Dundee, thank you very much. Whenever you're traveling, it's always important to keep your personal belongings safe and secure. But what about your private data on the interwebs? Well, luckily I use NordVPN, which just so happens to be today's video sponsor. NordVPN secures your internet traffic by using advanced encrypting technology. With one click of a button, your phone, computer, tablet, or whatever you're using to browse the net is now blocking malware ridden website and preventing cheeky hackers from stealing your personal data. Ah, Bruce Burger. Mmm. No matter what you're doing on the web, whether it be browsing, delivering important business presentations, or pretending to do work, NordVPN provides fast, reliable speeds thanks to Nord Links. This means you can stay safe on the web, get the job done at hand, whilst also avoiding buffering or any performance loss. It's knockoff time. Time to get back to the hotel for a little bit of time for myself. With NordVPN, you can watch your favorite content anywhere, anytime. By changing your virtual location and choosing from over 5,000 servers in 59 countries, you have access to TV shows and movies on streaming services otherwise not available in your country. Maybe I'll watch that Breaking Bad show that everyone was talking about. Ah, but it's not Netflix Australia. Ah. No problem. I'll just switch my virtual country to an American server. It's available there. Ah, that was easy. Now I can finally see what all the fuss is about. If all this sounds good, then why not give NordVPN a try? Use my link in the description and get four months free. Not to mention it's risk free with Nord's 30 day money back guarantee. Big thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video. <laughs> anyway, back to you big chief. Oh, all right, cool. Uh, thanks Drew. So anyway, back to the airport. It was time to start getting into the real work of the episode, and I figured I'd start with this intersection down here, which, I mean, it's not my finest work, and I figured this would probably be a good starting point. 
A lot of people were suggesting that a roundabout would be a good fit for this intersection, so I decided to run with that. And just so happens to be one of the things that I am really bad at doing. Uh, I usually build eggabouts, which are just wonky roundabouts, and I try implementing all the things that all the other pro YouTubers do, but I'm just, I really struggle with these things. So I decided to drag it out in this little field over here, still implementing the same technique, just making that cross section and then connecting some sort of circle in the middle. And when I say some sort, I truly mean that because this really isn't much of a circle, but I'm gonna run with this one anyway because I figured I'm gonna be changing the shape of it when we start actually adding up the nodes and changing the way that it fits within the actual context of uh, the intersection. And with the egg now in place, I started to connect up some of the roads, not really worrying too much about the way that they looked. You know, I'm going to change the way this looks quite a lot as the episode progresses, and I always find it much easier to connect up everything and then use move it just to make everything look a whole lot smoother. And look, by now you can probably tell that this is definitely not going to be a smooth, super satisfying intersection. This is going to be uh, fairly realistic in terms of Sometimes you hit intersections and you go, hmm, all right, this is pretty wonky. I could definitely uh, design this a lot better. Why is that connected here? I wish I could just cross this road. This is that sort of intersection. But you guys know that by now. I mean, that's sort of my style. I say that, I say it's my style, but really it's just because I uh, don't really have the skills to make anything super satisfying and symmetrical and nice. Uh, I like to imagine that this is one of those things that is built because it is probably on the cheaper side of things, you know, I think it would be a lot easier if you were a motorist and you needed to go to the arrivals section, then yeah, it'd probably be a lot easier if you could just bypass, you know, if there was a ramp that went over the top of this. But I do think that sometimes these things make sense in a, reali in a realistic setting. Maybe not so much in a city skyline setting, but for me creating something that is somewhat realistic, I kind of like this. Now you might just be thinking, that's a bit of a cop out. I mean, you're just saying that because it's easier to do it like this and you would be absolutely correct. Moving on from that roundabout, I wanted to work on the intersection that was connected up to what I'm calling the old road coming into the airport. Now, what I mean by that, I mean that this is the road that is connected up to the street. It goes directly to Dundee, but is full of uh, other intersections. It goes through the harbor, it goes through a lot of the industry you know, this is probably not the fastest way of getting to the airport. I wouldn't recommend taking it, but if you were maybe, uh, you know, going directly to the uh, industrial area, so if you're a cargo, which uh, we'll talk a bit about a little later on in this episode, but if you're cargo, then yeah, you'll probably take that road. And it'd also be a tollless road, so if you're trying to avoid the tolls on the highway, then you would probably also take this road. And maybe in some instances, yeah, it'd probably be a little faster, or I can early in the morning, go for it. But otherwise I would take this highway instead, which didn't have much of a connection before, but now it has a much better connection. But I'm also trying to figure out what the tram line is going to do. We've got this light rail and I wanted it to be connected to the airport. Uh, this was a suggestion from you guys and you know, I think we're just doing it for fun. We probably don't really need a light rail network going out this way, but let's be honest, more public transport, the better. I'm trying to make it work so that the light rail is also using the same roads as the motorists. However, this doesn't really work because we are going to need to allow for the light rail to use its own separate network because we're going to have a lot of people using this airport. As you can see, we already have quite a lot of people using the airport, but the roads are only going to get busier as the episode progresses. I don't know how, but this airport just becomes busier and busier as the episode goes on and on and on. So. Yeah, I think it's probably a good idea if we keep the light rail off the roads and give the light rail its own network. Now, just quickly, I wanted to ask you guys, we had a lot of people using, well, basically getting off the planes and going straight onto these service roads, these airport roads that I had dragged out in a live stream. And this doesn't look great, <laughs> but I do think it'd be kind of cool if we were seeing people using that network and maybe if there was some sort of shuttle bus going around their airport. So if you've got any ideas of a way of doing that, it'd be really fun to see people being taxied around on some sort of shuttle bus around those service roads. So if you've got any ideas, hit me up. Uh, but for now, we are continuing to work on some of these roads and I was starting to feel a little bit bad for the motorists. It is just an endless sea of traffic and anyone coming in and out of Dundee Airport is uh, just hit with that. 
I figured a light rail network would be a good starting point. I already had a pretty good idea of whereabouts I was going to drag it. Rather than having it go through the middle of the road, it would branch off at this intersection and then run alongside of it. I also decided that I wouldn't interrupt any of the traffic on the streets, so I decided not to include any of the light rail to go onto any of the roads, uh, at least not within the airport, it would just make things a little bit more messy. Instead, I'm using a mod, reversible tram network mod or something like that, which then allows me to place down stations that have trams then go in reverse rather than having to do a loop. So I figured that this would be the best spot for a tram stop. Now I tried to use this one building that is a tram station, but I just couldn't get it to fit underneath this uh, elevated road. So I ended up choosing this much smaller one and it actually fits in a really nice little spot. It's between two terminals and it also has a network that allows people to share the space, cross over into this smaller terminal, this red one, and it just fits nicely underneath this elevated road. And then once I'd done that, I kind of just wanted to figure out where the metro line was going to go. Because as you can see, we have an elevated metro line and this was going to be a lot harder to figure out where it was going to fit. You see, this airport is not that big, but I am also trying to fit in the types of infrastructure for what is a large airport. And this metro station is just super long. It's just, it's a cool looking station, but it's just massive. I ended up dragging a concourse in the middle here and then just trying to figure out where I could make this thing fit. But then I realized that I didn't really need a station this long. It's actually a much larger station than I really needed. So I ended up deciding to use this tram station and rather than using it as a tram station, I would use the mover mod to select the nodes on the platform and then I can delete it and then drag out my very own metro line. It is a super easy technique and it just works really nicely. Unfortunately though, our metro line has now got a station that is on the ground level. So we need to elevate this thing up so we don't have to have some sort of intersection blocking the traffic even more. So we use Move It to raise up our platform and this honestly looks pretty nice at this level. Just gonna figure out what's gonna go underneath it, but that is a problem that we'll tackle a little later on in this episode. For now, I wanted to test to see if this was even going to work, because at this stage I didn't even know if this was even gonna operate. So I drag out a line all the way to our central station. This is the most logical place to have a network that goes all the way out to our airport. There's not a huge amount of traffic on this network. There's not a huge amount of traffic on this line, which means that we shouldn't have a huge amount of interruptions, but I ended up choosing some of the higher capacity vehicles. These are custom Dundee vehicles made by Blue Thunder. They look awesome and they operate so well between the airport and central station. Just going along the middle of the highway and connecting up to our uh, airport, which uh, unfortunately has nobody uh, using it at the moment. So I connect a pedestrian pathway up to our platform and hopefully we're going to see some people actually using it. It's a bit of a wait and see so I decided just to give it a bit of time and go back to our light rail which was going to be a much easier connection. I hit up the same trick connecting it up to our central station. This is of course our busiest area and it's the best place to connect up to other parts of Dundee. I do wonder though, should we connect it up to other parts of the city or maybe we just leave it going to Central Station, I'm not really quite sure. With our line now complete, I select the highest capacity vehicles. These are going to be the best for getting the most amount of people to and from the airport. And man oh man does this work like a treat. Turns out giving people public transport options, they, uh, they really love it, they end up taking it. And the same can be said for our metro line, which actually has quite a lot of people using it but I tell you what, it gets pretty hectic a little bit later on. Feeling pretty satisfied with the public transport of our airport, I decided to spend a little bit of time on the cargo side of things. Because as you can see, vehicles, cargo trucks have to go all the way through the heart and center of the airport just to get in and out, which really is not a great idea. You want to try and keep cargo and passenger servers pretty separate because they are already quite demanding in terms of the infrastructure that they need. So I decided to utilize this roundabout and provide just another ramp onto our highway so that cargo could come in and out without having to go all the way through the terminals. It was just a matter of trying to figure out ways of getting it so that we could actually get cargo to not use the same roads. 
Obviously there was going to be some sort of double lump, but I figured that this was going to be the best option with this dedicated uh, ramp that goes straight to our elevated highway over here. It means that cargo can just use this roundabout rather than having to go all the way through the heart and center where all the passengers are. And this works really well. After spending so much time on the roads, I wanted just to spend a bit of time doing some detailing, doing a little bit of nature stuff on this uh, road coming into the airport. So I figured that, you know, you got to try and make your entrance to the airport kind of nice, you know, you want it to sort of represent what the city is like, what the country is like. You know, that's what countries and cities usually do. They try to make it so that the first thing that you see or the last thing that you see of an airport is kind of like a bit of a representation of what that place was like. So being uh, Oceania, being Dundee, I wanted to include a lot of uh, all these gum trees and bushes because it is quite a naturey nice place. And these gum trees are just a very iconic Australian uh, tree that I wanted to include in this area. So I thought that just creating a nice real uh, bushy type of area just kind of gives a nice little uh, nice little nod to the place that you're leaving or the place that you're visiting. Now I do feel like we need just one more thing, something that is the main the main appeal or the main feature. There's got to be something else here, but I don't really know what that is yet. There is a spot right next to the intersection that I was working on before that could actually be a good spot for maybe a sign or maybe some sort of feature, you know, like a fountain or I don't know, a garden or something. Got an idea, hit me up because I don't really know what to include there. Getting back to the roads, but also continuing a little bit of detail work, I wanted to just do a little bit of line work on some of these intersections. You know, using intersection marking tool is just one of those, it's just an amazing mod that sometimes you just take for granted, you just sort of remember every now and again. Sometimes I get flashbacks to when we had to use, you know, uh, props and decals just to create these intersections. They take hours and hours and hours. Now it takes a couple of minutes, though we end up doing crazy amounts of work on some of these things. So they probably end up taking about the same amount of time when you actually look at the level of detail that ends up going into some of these things. And then I want to just add a couple of custom supports underneath some of these uh, elevated sections. Uh, some of these roads that I'm using, these new roads that are just jumped on the Steam Workshop, I can't remember what they're called, but they're brand new as of recording this. But they're super nice, but the concrete version of this, the ground version of it, doesn't have any sort of railing on some of these elevated sections. So I have to go back and probably add them manually, and as you can see, we're definitely gonna have to come back to this place and add in some extra bits of detail a little later on. After a little bit of time, you can see that the Metro is well and truly getting its usage. There are so many people, probably an unrealistic amount of people using the Metro line. And I figured it was probably because we only have a couple of options. We've got the light rail, we've got, you know, taxi service, you can drive, and then you've also got this Metro. But in terms of public transport, that's it. Well, we are now adding in a bus terminal because Blue Thunder has also included some amazing buses that he has created, created almost a year ago. And these are buses that are dedicated for the airport. So I figured we'd actually finally get around to using it I just needed to figure out the best possible spot to add some sort of bus station. And I thought that this would be a good spot. I wanted it to be kind of close to the main terminal of the uh, actual airport, also close to some of the other sections of our uh, other public transport options. 
With the bus station now there, this overpass didn't make a lot of sense, just kind of dragging off into thin air. So I decided to turn the entire building here into a procedural object so that I could actually change where some of these pedestrian overpasses sat. And I thought that this would be a good opportunity to use this as some sort of walkway between the terminal of the airport into our metro station. And then this would stop all those people from crossing the street, blocking our traffic, they can actually just take this instead and go directly into the station, which ended up working pretty well. For some reason, people are still kind of going over there for, I don't really know why they're doing that. I'm pretty sure they were just crossing the road because they were kind of stuck in this, I don't know, there were so many planes dropping people off that these guys were probably already destined to cross the road, to then cross the road again, to then cross the road over the overpass. When it comes to the bus routes, I decided to drag it out into other areas of Dundee. I dragged one out to Central Station, of course, but then I also decided to put one out at Matilda Point, and then there is another one that goes all the way out to the terminal, out towards the beach, which I thought was a good idea considering that these were pretty large areas and a lot of people lived out this way and we already had the bus stations there and I thought that that would probably make a lot of sense. And I tell you what, these Blue Thunder buses that are dedicated to take people to and from the airport, they just look amazing. So thank you Blue Thunder for creating, once again, awesome, awesome custom vehicles driving around Dundee. They look, they just look amazing. And with public transport now well and truly sorted, I mean, people have got so many different options to get to and from Dundee and the airport. I wanted to try and change the spawn point for the terminal so that people weren't just spawning vehicles out of the pockets as they left the airport. They were instead walking across the road and getting it from, you know, the giant car park across the street. But unfortunately, it doesn't really work for tourist vehicles. It doesn't really work for uh, vehicles like that. It works for service vehicles. And, you know, that just doesn't work, which is a shame because it would be so great if it could actually work that way. Unless I might have it wrong. If you have any ideas of making it so that people kind of don't just spawn vehicles out of their pockets, that would be amazing. Something else that I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get people to use other pathways around the airport rather than crossing the street. And I'm trying to connect up different areas uh, just using uh, pathways that go in and out of the buildings and trying to just connect it in different ways. And it works in some places and other areas it doesn't really work. Uh, it's something that I'm going to continue to work on if you've got any ideas of maybe using tunnels or maybe getting other pathways going around this place. I think that would probably help to get people in and out of places. And with the bulk of the infrastructure now in place for the airport, I'm just putting in some bits of detail and I'm also going to talk to you guys about what other things do you think we need to include with this airport? I would love to include some sort of car rental, something that's a bit more custom. I don't really want to use Hertz or anything like that. I would like it to be custom and I would love it to function like a car rental. So maybe I make it a taxi service and then I just choose the vehicles that are of that car rental or something like that. You know, I think we could be clever. I'm sure there's some sort of model, some assets that could operate like that. I also want to include some sort of hotel. I also need some more parking and I'm going to need some warehouses and other areas like that around the cargo side of thing. But I feel like we need some extra stuff. What do you guys reckon? Because we'll be back here probably next episode. Uh, I am currently on holidays, so I am actually recording this as I am, well, should be packing right now. So I would like to put it to you guys, what do you reckon we should be adding in to the next episode? I'd like to work here a couple more times before we, you know, say the airport is complete, or maybe it's just never complete, we'll just see how we go. Uh, there's a lot of detail work that I'm really looking forward to adding into this. And in terms of the rest of Oceania, if you're worried about it wrapping up anytime soon, don't be. I actually have no plans on wrapping up Oceania. I'm at a point where I only want to come back and record big episodes like this, you know, where we chip away at something pretty big and then I ask for a bit of feedback and then I get it and then I come back and work on something extra. I don't really want to just do small builds, so I kind of want to only come back for those bigger ones. But I have no plans on wrapping things up. I really would like to work on this airport and I'd like to... I mean, there's so many things I still want to complete, but I am sort of focusing on Sunset City at the moment for releasing episodes weekly for that when I'm not on holidays. Uh, but Oceania will be back and continue to be back until we wrap this thing up or if there's a, you know, City Skies 2 or something like that. 
but you know, let's not hold our breaths. Uh, but anyway, guys, that is it for today's episode. Thank you all so much for watching. It is always very much appreciated. A big shout out to my cheeky patrons for supporting the channel and helping me make videos like this possible. Robin Regals, Vivid Swing, Pablo Hernandez, Ronan Kelly, Bobby LLA, Stephen Badassa, Leo Horton, Jeff Flex, Yezin Wang, and Dan Foster. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye!